Out of nowhere, suddenly the jinn of Khalistan is haunting the national security of the country. A lunatic ISI agent has become the face of the separatist organization called Waris Punjab Day. Now the government has taken steps to normalize the situation and as a result, the sympathizers of Khalistan are now coming out of their hideouts and showing their anxiety and depression and ISI has played a big role in it. Namaste and welcome to TFI Post. I'm your host, Porish Gupta. Let's begin. Lately, the sudden rise of Khalistani elements has raised serious concerns about national security. The frequent incidents in Ajnala and the death threats to Home Minister Amit Shah added fuel to the fire. And after the ISI links of Amrit Pal Singh were verified by the intelligence reports, the central forces joined by the Punjab police initiated a statewide hunt that led to the arrest of 78 members of the Khalistani outfit. While Amrit Pal Singh is still on the run, his sympathizers have started to come out of their hideouts as they cannot digest such strong action against their mascot. In a recent development, some radical Khalistani sympathizers gathered in front of the Indian High Commission in London. They tried to present themselves as protesters but soon peeled off the so-called democratic attire to act like terrorists, which they really are. They grabbed the tiranga and smashed the windows. In an anarchic way, the integrity of the mission was targeted, which has now led to a request for an explanation from the British authorities. Although a person has been arrested in this matter, this is a great violation and breach of the safety of the Indian embassy. It cannot be swept under the rug with such kid glove treatment. It needs swift and strong action, one that instills fear in these vile creatures and create deterrence against such actions in the future. For this, the Indian government has summoned the senior British diplomat in India and asked him to explain the complete absence of British security. Signed in 1961, the Vienna Convention on Diplomatic Relations is an international treaty that governs the rules and customs of diplomacy between states. As per the convention, the security of foreign diplomats and embassies is the responsibility of the host nation. This time, Britain has failed miserably again and again. In the past, Britain has witnessed many RELS attacks. It stands for randomly unceasing low-level scattered violence. On account of these RELS attacks, London Mayor Sadiq Khan could have provided heightened security to the Indian Embassy and secured the parameters of the Indian Embassy. It is important to note that London Mayor Sadiq Khan is a member of the Labour Party. It is infamous for taking an anti-India stance to cater to its Pakistani origin voter base. The example of Labour Party's appeasement strategy is self-explanatory from its Kashmir policy. During the Leicester attack on Hindus, a similar kind of silence was maintained by a member of the Labour Party and his sister Mayor Peter Salisbury. The reasons for this silence on anti-Hindu attacks was the same, a changed demographic and a high percentage of Muslim voters. As per some accounts, Muslim voters account for around 18.5%. The British government, which has been shocked by the terrorist attacks, is now under pressure. The mayor of London, Sadiq Khan, the British High Commissioner to India, Alex Ellis, and Foreign Office Minister, Tariq Ahmed, have condemned the act. But it is not enough. It becomes the responsibility of both Mayor Sadiq and British Home Secretary, Suela Braberman. India certainly has questions for British authorities that they need to answer. But these attacks have crossed limits and tolerance. It cannot be corrected with words alone or a few arrests. The government has to crack down on this Khalistani ISI nexus within their country. By now, it is clear that Amrit Pal Singh was linked to ISI, but it was the UK where he developed those links. According to media reports, Amrit Pal Singh is believed to be a close associate of UK-based Khalistani terrorist Avtar Singh Khanda. Khanda is believed to be behind Amrit Pal Singh's installation. Khanda is the henchman of the leader of Bent Babbar Khalsa International Paramjit Singh Pamma, who radicalizes the Sikh youth. Although he developed connections with ISI in Dubai, it cannot be ignored that Pakistan's bloodthirsty intelligence agency ISI and its cannon fodder Khalistanis have closely worked together to instill anti-Indian sentiments in Indians, mainly Sikhs and Muslims in the UK. This was evident in the review into the government's counter-terrorism early intervention prevent strategy, a report of the government of UK published in February. The UK is gradually becoming the haven of Khalistani terrorists and ISI agents that are ready to jeopardize Indian integrity. So after the hunt for Amrit Pal Singh was initiated, this anti-India toolkit was activated in the UK and the act of cowardice took place outside the Indian embassy in London. The UK had an option to prevent it. The staunch critic of the FTA with India, Suela Braverman, after the publication of the preventive strategy review 
regarding Khalistani radicalization, she addressed the House of Commons and committed that she intends to swiftly implement all of the recommendations from the review into the preventive strategy, a UK-wide system set up as an example of early warning system against terrorist threats. Still, the incident took place and that too in London and outside the Indian High Commission. This is the clear failure of Swella Braberman. So basically, it could have been prevented if the measures were taken. And this shows that the UK is becoming the second biggest haven after Canada, where the Khalistani terrorists are roaming free. It would not be an exaggeration to say that Khalistanis are getting red carpet treatment in the UK. The government of the UK has to realize that the incident at the High Commission is more than an act of protest. The incident has obviously aroused resentment and raised trust deficits over the security of the Indian mission's integrity in the UK. This needs to be tackled accordingly and not leniently, as it can lead to bilateral repercussions. Apart from that, there is an urgent need to neutralize the radicalized Khalistani terrorists sitting inside their hideouts in London. Until it does not happen, any step taken by the UK government will end up gaining nothing and will eventually be called a breeder of Khalistani terrorists. Now the UK has to ensure that its global clout does not erode further. But if they don't, sooner or later, they will face global condemnation for sympathizing with and going soft on terrorizing elements. Furthermore, with anti-India elements roaming free, the UK government is worsening its stances on signing a FTA deal with India.